Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening uh, to everybody out there. I mentioned in the chat uh, just a few seconds ago that maybe I should just say Happy Friday uh, because of all the time changes around the world. But morning, hey, oh, I got to turn my audio off here. Um, but hello, it's good to see all of you. Um, I know last week uh, someone mentioned that they thought uh, the English lessons that I do on Fridays um, when you watch them later, uh, the beginning sounds boring because I just say hi to everybody, but I like saying hi to everybody. So hello, Kate. Hello, Van Koa. Hello, Ha. Hello, Esteban. Vinicius Oromo. Uh, hello, Mustafa. Hello, Brightside. Hello, Beata. Uh, Kate Tejman is here. Hi, Tejman. Dark Blue. Hello, Dark Blue. Uh, Chris Hexagonal Froggy. Um, and Alina, thank you so much for all of you that are here. Um, as you saw, we are going to be looking at, again, opposites. Um, we looked at opposites a couple of weeks ago. I think it was two weeks ago we looked at opposites. And opposites are a great way to um, kind of lock the vocabulary into your mind because uh, when you know the one meaning and then you know the complete opposite meaning, uh, it can really help you. So Tejman says, glad to see you again. You too, Tejman. And uh, thanks to all of you in chat. You're also people who leave comments uh, throughout the week on my other videos. I, I do really appreciate that. So um, opposites though, Let, let's get started. So we have, my first one is, um, I'm just looking down here. I don't want to kick the camera. I have argue and agree. So you can see these two people are arguing they're definitely disagreeing. Um, sometimes when people argue, um, they end up yelling at each other, but sometimes people argue um, n with their voices not so loud either. But these people are definitely arguing. Uh, and in uh, most places around the world, a handshake is kind of the symbol of two people agreeing. Uh, in English, we have um, sayings like uh, let's shake on it and that means you know let's close this agreement uh, with a handshake so let's shake on it or you could say the deal was done on a handshake that means that uh, the two people agreed on something and they shook hands at the end of it uh, to show that they had agreement so argue uh, is obviously when you disagree and agree is when you uh, both come to the same conclusion about something. So anyways, I see the numbers jumping up. I see Cringe Masters is here and Scion and Kaor Kaorai. Uh, hi, Cringe Masters. It's good to see you back. Uh, fun to see a fellow YouTuber in the chat. Gosia is here, or Gosia. I, I don't always know. Uh, and Beryl Vilsan is here as well. And Lulu, uh, hello to everybody. Hello, Yada as well. Um, sorry, I'm getting mixed up here. When you get mixed up, it means you don't know what you're doing anymore. For those of you just joining us, we're doing uh, some more opposites today. So words that mean uh, the opposite of each other. And hello, Apoa. First time here. Awesome uh, to see you there um, or see, to see you here. Uh, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anybody. I don't think I did, but uh, we got 42 people here learning English today and we're learning uh, opposites again. So. These pictures might be a little hard to see, but we have above and below. So here, this is a picture from an airplane and you can see that we're above the clouds. This picture is from below a basketball net and we're looking up at it. So above means to, um, that something, is, <laughs> I was going to say above means that you're above something and below means that you're below it. Uh, so above means that you're on top of something and below means that you are underneath it. So here we are above the clouds, here we are below the basketball net. This isn't a great picture because you have to imagine that you're looking up uh, at the basketball net. But I think you guys get the point. Um, <laughs> Uh, next one is, are, by the way, these aren't going to all be very easy opposites. I tried to pick some more difficult words so that you're learning pronunciation uh, at the same time as you're learning uh, the opposite. So here we have artificial and natural. So I chose a light bulb for artificial because um, when you have light that comes out of a light bulb, 
uh, we call it artificial light. And when you have light that comes from the sun, we would call that natural light. So oftentimes um, when you're inside at night um, and you're doing photographs, you would say that you're doing it under artificial lighting. And when you're outside, you would be taking photographs under natural lighting. So artificial is anything that is man-made and natural uh, is anything that exists in nature on its own. Um, so a light bulb and the light gut that comes from it is all man-made. You know, we as human beings have made that uh, light bulb and, and used that to make light, whereas the sunlight just comes uh, from the sun naturally. Uh, no need for us to do anything uh, to get sunlight. Uh, Dark Blue wants to know if left and right are on here today. Uh, they're, they're not. I didn't do, I didn't do left and right today. Uh, Oromo says, you are a nice teacher. Thanks, Oromo. That's awesome. Uh, and bright side, the opposite of bright would be dark. Um, so we have bright side here and dark blue. They're kind of opposites in their names. Uh, hello, Lawson. Uh, good to see you. Uh, next one, attack and defend. So you can see that this girl is attacking this guy. Anytime you punch someone or kick someone, she's punching him, by the way, um, you would be attacking that person. Um, and this person is a soccer goalie or football keeper or soccer keeper, whatever country you're in, and he is defending the net or defending the goal. Um, so we have a girl attacking a guy and we have this person defending. So you can also use these um, terms in times of war, right? Uh, armies attack um, and then other countries sometimes defend themselves. So attacking is an act of aggression. Um, you are being aggressive and uh, defending is an act of uh, defense, right? You're being defensive. So attack and defend. Next we have careless and careful. So this person, I don't know if you can see it, but this person is texting while driving a car. And we would consider that careless. So they're doing something uh, without thinking about it. They're doing something that might be a little bit dangerous. Um, but texting and driving is considered careless. In fact, in Canada, you can get a ticket for driving carelessly. So there's actually different types of tickets uh, and you can get a ticket for careless driving, which means that you drove without thinking about others. Um, you can also get a ticket for reckless driving. That's, I think, even worse than careless. And careful, um, I wasn't sure what kind of picture to get for careful. So I found this, um, these really fine, fancy dishes and I thought, if you were to wash these dishes, you would want to be careful. Um, so when you're careful, it means that you're taking precautions not to break something. You're, you're doing something slowly because uh, you want to be careful and not break them. So if you had a tea set like this, this is a tea set uh, with uh, cups and saucers, you would want to be careful uh, when you use them and when you wash them so that you don't break them. Um, <laughs> Hello, Teacher Bob. Thanks, Cherwin. So I see Cherwin. Misha Collins is here. Hello, Misha. Welcome. William Yen is here. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, Uu is here. Hello, Uu. It's good to see you, too. Uh, Hector is here. Um, Cherwin, I think I mentioned. Um, it's awesome, Uu, that you made it here today. So we're doing opposites. Uh, let me get my... Uh, oh, I lost my paper. No, here it is. Again, we're doing opposites today. Uh, we did some two weeks ago, but I thought it would be fun uh, to do a few more. So here we have catch and miss. So this is American football. It could also be Canadian football. Our football is very different than your football. Um, so this person is catching the ball. You can see he has it firmly in his hands. Um, so he has caught the ball. Uh, the ball was thrown to him and he was able to catch it. This person, I'm not sure if you can see his face, but he has missed the ball. So this is a catch. This is a miss. 
um, it looks like he um, just about caught the ball but was not able to and so the bell, ball fell. You can hear me using a few different words there. So if he is catching the ball, but yesterday he caught the ball, so that's the past form of it, um, or he is missing the ball, he will miss the ball, or yesterday he missed the ball. So um, you're gonna have to study a little bit up on that because these are verbs, but this is definitely a catch. I'm sure the fans are very happy right now the spectators who are watching the sport probably cheered um, and here I'm sure the fans aren't happy um, with this person uh, missing the throw or missing the ball so again this is American football we in Canada we also have the same type of football um, that's why we call your football soccer uh, because our football is a little different um, I'm sure you've watched the Super Bowl or at least uh, heard of the Super Bowl. So, um, hello Saba, welcome. Hello Sejun Song, welcome to the live stream. If you don't know uh, Sejun Song, and I pronounce your name wrong, Sejun. I know it's not your real name, but he is. Uh, I think he has been my longest standing viewer. He started watching my videos right from the beginning. So, hello Sejun, it's good to see you. Um, uh, and Margarita Petrova, welcome as well. We're doing opposites today, guys. And gr when I say guys, by the way, I mean both guys and girls. It's just a way of speaking, I think. So, ceiling. Uh, you can't see it in this room, uh, but up there uh, is the ceiling. So we have a picture here. So there's a light hanging from the ceiling. Uh, people learning English sometimes have trouble with this word. Um, but the ceiling is the top part of a room and then the floor uh, is down there. The floor is the bottom uh, part of a room. So we have the ceiling and we have the floor uh, and then around me of course are the walls. So things fall on the floor. You can hang things from the ceiling. So this light is hanging from the ceiling um, but they are definitely opposites of each other. Ceiling and the floor. In French, sometimes I get them mixed up, so. Yeah, that is easier for me. Uh, Lao. <laughs> yes, my dog is sitting on my floor. That's a great example, lost, Re really good. Um, and then Brightside says the Super Bowl was the, pa yeah, the Patriots. They are an amazing team, by the way. Um, here we go, deep and shallow. So here you have a picture of the ocean and we are way, way out in the ocean. So in this part of the ocean, the water is really, really deep. So if you went in, you would not be able to touch the bottom. Um, here we're at the, we're on a beach close to the edge of the ocean. Here the water is very, very shallow. Um, it probably only goes up to your knees. Uh, and you can probably walk out pretty far and the water is still really shallow. Uh, deep water um, is not very fun if you can't swim. Um, if you can't tread water, it's not nice uh, to be in deep water. But if you uh, don't know how to swim, shallow water is quite fun uh, in the summer to go and play in the water, cool off a little bit. So deep and shallow. Lostim says that they're afraid of deep water. I'm, I'm a little bit too. I'm not a big fan of uh, being way out. If we go swimming at the lake, I usually go in up to my neck and I don't go any further because um, I don't really like it too much. So anyways, uh, follow and lead. So I just have one picture here. These aren't my sheep. This is a picture from the internet. Um, but later this year, I'll show you my sheep at home. But this sheep, sorry, these sheep are following, so if you follow someone, uh, they are in the lead. So this sheep is leading, and these sheep are all following. If you know sheep, I don't know how many of you um, are familiar with sheep, but if you can get one sheep to go in one direction, the rest of the sheep all follow. Um, let me know in the chat if any of you have taken care uh, of sheep. Um, at home we have about 10 sheep right now 
and uh, they're just about to go out on pasture in the next couple of weeks so they'll go outside to eat once the grass starts growing and when we try to get them outside if we can get one sheep to go the rest will all follow uh, that sheep outside so this person in the lead is called the leader and these sheep who are following are called followers um, so that's follow and lead um, let's see here plant and harvest I really like this one um, because uh, Jen and I Jen is my wife Jen and I do plant a lot of stuff and we harvest a lot of stuff so when you plant something you can see this person is putting seeds in the ground so he is planting um, some kind of crop and here you have in English we would call this a combine this machine here and it is harvesting so when you plant at the beginning of the season you hope that you will have a good harvest at the end of the season so I'm not sure how many of you uh, grow things, but uh, you should uh, um, do that a little bit. It's kind of fun uh, to watch stuff grow. Um, let's see here what's happening here. Follow me. Oh, it's yeah, the chat's hiding some stuff on people. Um, let's see here. Venetia says, My father had some sheep on his farm. Yeah, you know, sheep are neat, and um, I know a lot of you live in the cities, but. Um, I think you should all try to go visit the country some someday in the future. It's really nice uh, out in the country. Um, let's keep going here though. We have hungry and we have thirsty. So this person is eating a pizza and she is hungry. I think this one's fairly straightforward. But I wanted to go over thirsty um, because it's on the list of um, where you guys have told me are hard to pronounce words. So it's the thirsty thirsty it's the th sound is hard for some of you and the thirsty like it's a it's a tricky word um, so hungry is fairly easy right hungry um, but the pronunciation of thirsty um, I know is a bit of a challenge for some of you I'm not sure I'm holding these so you guys can see them very well um, but this lady is definitely hungry and this guy is definitely thirsty um, opposites are they really opposites though? I mean, a little bit, I guess. Um, <laughs> here we go. Um, Lost, <laughs> Lostin says now they, they want a pizza. So yeah, that happens to me too, but I just had breakfast. So. Uh, so we have to be careful with this one. We have loser. So this boy looks sad um, because he probably lost this game. This is bowling, by the way. I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, and this person is finishing a race and they are a winner. Um, the reason I say you need to be careful is if you call someone a loser in English, it's an insult. So you can use it to refer to a sports game. So you have a winner and a loser. And you can say, oh yeah, my team, they were the losers last night. Or um, yeah, he played in a badminton tournament and he, at the end, he was... Actually, we don't even say that. We would say he lost. The reason I'm struggling with this is because if I say, you know, my brother is a loser, that's a, that's a real insult in English. My brother's not, by the way. I have two brothers, and they're both awesome. If you're watching, guys, you're not losers. <laughs> um, but it's an insult. So be careful with calling someone a loser uh, in English. So if you were to say, Bob the Canadian is a loser, um, that, that, would, that would be a pretty bad insult. I'll type that in here for a sec. Bob the Canadian is not a loser. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so be careful with that because even though the term loser means the person who lost a game, if you use it out of context, it is an insult. Um, and oh, you know what insults are, right? It's when you say something uh, mean to someone. Hello, Kuhn. Welcome. And uh, Jamal and Rachel and Firas. And I think I've lost track of who I've all said hi to. Uh, we're going to look at safe and dangerous. This person is putting on their seatbelt. If you watched my video from Tuesday, I went and looked at all the parts of a car. Um, 
When this live stream is done, if you're watching it on the replay, I'll, I'll put a link above to the video, but this person wants to be safe, so they are putting their seat belt on so that they can be safe. This is a tiger. A tiger is dangerous. Um, why don't you, <laughs> why don't you um, uh, let me know in the chat if you have tigers in your country. We do not have tigers in Canada. There are only at the zoo do we have tigers in Canada. So um, yeah, let me know in the chat. I know some of you are from countries where you have tigers, but wearing your seatbelt is safe. Um, tigers are dangerous um, if you live in a country that has tigers. I would be very afraid of, of tigers. I'm not a big fan of uh, animals that, uh, well, we learned attack, right? So I'm not a big fan of animals that would uh, do that. So um, yeah, let me know in the chat if you have tigers in your country. Uh, here we have useless and useful. So I found a picture here of what I think are dead batteries. Um, in English, when a battery uh, doesn't have any more power in it, uh, we, it's a dead battery. And so here we have a pile of dead batteries and they're useless. Um, there's, we also say the battery doesn't have any more juice in it. So um, juice is a kind of another word for electricity. You know, like there's orange juice and apple juice, but we also say, you know, um, battery doesn't have any more juice in it. The battery is dead. So these are useless, okay? Useless means they have no use um, in the world. And this is a flashlight and the light's on. So this would be useful. So this would be something that uh, you could <laughs> you could definitely use. I just uh, thought of something though. Useless is another way to insult someone. I don't mean <laughs> to teach you so many insults this morning, but if you say someone is useless, if you were to say, Bob, you're useless, um, that's kind of mean and it's a bit of an insult. So anyways, these batteries are dead, so they're useless. This flashlight works, so it is useful. So people like tigers, I see that. Um, and uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure what St. John is talking about. So we have vertical and horizontal. Um, so vertical is anything that goes up and down, and horizontal is anything that lays flat. Um, these terms are used in math a lot. In a graph, you have the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. But you could also say like um, when they install um, power or uh, hydro poles or fence posts, they always make them vertical. Um, and then there's bridges are horizontal. So when something goes up and down, it's vertical. Uh, and when something goes this way, it is horizontal. Hopefully that made some sense. Uh, to you. Just a few more here. Um, we have cats in France, says Chris. Uh, is that less dangerous? Yeah, I think cats are a, a little bit less dangerous than tigers for sure. Um, anyways, let's, let's, yeah, and then Lost in says, oh no, don't, don't talk about math. No, we're going to go away from math now. We're going to go to whole and part. Uh, I added this because uh, I got feedback from you guys too that this is a tough word to pronounce, that it's hard to pronounce. Well, the W doesn't make a sound, so it's just whole. So here we have a whole car. Um, when you order a pizza, you get a whole pizza. It's complete, right? So this is every single part together makes a whole car. And then this is a spark plug. This is part of the car. Um, so they're kind of opposites, right? I mean, you have um, the entire thing is the whole thing and then you just have the part. Uh, you can also have, uh, when you, I'm talking about pizza again, I hope you guys don't get hungry, but with pizza you can have the whole pizza and you can have a piece of pizza as well, right? So here we have, I'm gonna draw a pizza. This is Bob the Canadian's elite drawing skills. I'll put some pepperoni on it. So this is the whole pizza. And then this right here is a piece. So we don't use part. Um, 
when we talk about pizza, but we, uh, we, we would use this to say, we would say the whole pizza, and then here you have one single uh, piece of pizza. I'm going to stop drawing now. <laughs> um, just have a few more guys, and then we're done. So bored um, and amused. Well, this should say amused. I forgot a letter here. Let me fix it for a sec. There we go. It's all fixed. So bored and amused. So you can see this person has a look on their face. Um, it looks like they're, they're probably studying math. Lost them. They're probably studying math here. Um, so they're bored. Um, when you're bored, you're not excited. You're not amused. Um, these people are in a boat and it looks like they're going down some kind of water slide at an amusement park. So they are amused. Uh, you can hear the word amused right in the name. Amusement park is a place we go where there's lots of rides. Um, and uh, one of the types of rides can be a, um, a water slide. So they're in a boat. They've probably just come down a long slide and now the water is splashing them. So this girl's bored and these people are amused. Um, so to be amused means to have fun, by the way. So bored and amused. This next one's kind of similar. Let's do a checklist for some parts of a car. Yeah, I don't know. I, if you watched my last video, you know my knowledge is limited when it comes to vehicles. Um, this girl is calm. So she's sitting on a dock by a lake. So when you have a wooden um, structure that goes out into a lake, it's called a dock. And it looks like she might be doing some kind of meditation um, just to calm her mind. So she's very peaceful and very calm. These people are at what looks like a rock concert. So they are excited. Um, so kind of the complete opposite. Here there's no noise, it's peaceful. She's out in nature. Here there's going to be loud music and people jumping and singing along. So they are very, very excited. So calm and excited. Usually I'm excited. No, usually I'm calm, I'm not sure. Are you usually calm or excited? It's a good question, I think, for you guys. Um, yeah, I, sh I should probably, uh, um, I should have a link in the description for all of you so you could order pizzas, things like that. Flat and hilly. Um, so here we have, um, in Western Canada, we have the prairies, and in Western, the Western United States, they have the prairies. If you've ever visited, um, the western parts of either Canada or the United States, it is very flat, okay? You can see for miles and miles. Um, and this is a very good picture of that. You can see there's some people on horses here, but they are in an extremely flat area. As opposed to where I live, it's actually a little bit hilly. So you can see there's a hill, there's another little hill, there's a hill in the background as well. So flat and hilly are the two uh, types of terrain, I guess we would call it. When you describe the earth, you say terrain. So flat and hilly. I think we saw this guy, I think we saw this picture in another live stream. This is a plumber. Um, so he is um, fixing something. When you fix something, it means that you are repairing it. It means that it was broken. When you fix it, you make it better. When you break it, so we see a window here that uh, someone threw a rock because they wanted to break the window. So this is broken and this is being repaired. So he is fixing it. Um, this man is able to fix the faucet uh, and someone threw a stone because they wanted to break this window. So fix and break. Morning to saying Willie, how are you? Morning Anus, how is everybody? Morning Esther, I see you guys joining. Um, we just have a few more to go, guys, and then we're done. Foreground and background. So this is something that we use to describe a photo. The road and this grass is in the foreground of the picture. So it's in the front of the picture. In the background, we see a rainbow and some mountains. So foreground is the front, background is the back of a picture. 
Um, so a lot of times you'll take a picture of your family and you'll, you'll have your family in the foreground, um, but then someone will jump in in the back and make a funny face and uh, you'll say, oh, there was somebody in the background of the picture. So foreground is the front, background is the back. Well, it's interesting, Scion, that you ask because <laughs> Here I have ill and healthy. So Sion Allen asked, Hello Bob, which one is right? Sick versus health or ill versus health? So here we go. This person is ill. You can also say that they are sick. You can use the both. Uh, they're interchangeable. They mean the same thing. So if I'm not feeling well, I could say to my boss, I'm feeling sick today or I'm feeling ill today. You can use both. Uh, this person's out running, so they are probably feeling healthy. Okay. So ill or sick and then healthy. I'm glad I had this one, Cyan. I could answer your question very quickly. Um, we have thick and thin. So you can see this tree trunk is thick. When something's thick, it's really, really wide. And you can see that this new tree has a very thin trunk. I don't even know if I would call it a trunk yet. So tree trunk, this is a thick one. This tree is very, very old. This one is very, very thin. So we have thick and we have thin. Um, and we have a saying in English, um, you wanna stick with people through thick and thin. So I am gonna stay with my wife through thick and thin. When you stay with someone through thick and thin, it means that even if, when it's good times or bad times, you're gonna stay together. So um, I think a lot of you guys, you're with me through thick and thin. It's kinda nice. When I make a bad video, you still watch it. And I appreciate it. Brightside says, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. That's a good saying. We say that a lot in English. I, tr I try to eat an apple a day. I eat a banana a day. That's about it. Uh, valley and mountain. So the spot in between the mountains is called a valley. This whole area is probably a valley. And then this is the mountain. So many times... Um, if you look at your countries, if you live in a mountainous country, people generally live in the valleys. They live in the areas between the mountains because that's usually where the ground is a little more flat um, and they're able to grow things. Um, but valley and mountain are two. That's it, people. We did it. We're through the whole list. That was 25 opposites. That means we just looked at 50 different words. That's a lot of words. Um, you just learned, I'm going to put that in here, 50 words. That's pretty good, I think. Um, remember, don't forget to come back. Uh, if you need to review these, come back and watch this again tomorrow. This uh, live stream, it does get recorded uh, and you can come back and watch it again. It's really good for your listening. Um, for anyone that's new here who's not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button. If anyone wants to give me a thumbs up, that would be great as well. Um, and if you have any questions right now, I have a few minutes. Um, if you put them in the chat right now, I would be very, very happy uh, to answer them. I'm going to scroll back and see what uh, some people have said. Um, Rachel says, in Taiwan, there's a lot of high mountains. Uh, Sejan recommends sometimes drinking beer keeps the doctor away. Well, don't drink too much, though. Uh, Venetia says, thank you. Beta says, thank you. That's awesome. Ka Kari says that I'm a nice teacher. Thank you. Um, and Yada says he's watching the video. Oh, you're watching my video about vehicles. That's cool. Um, Yada, thank you very much. Um, we have Tsing says, uh, oh, he came from Taiwan and he lives in Mississauga. He actually lives about an hour away from me. Um, and it's hard for him to talk to someone yeah, because he has to translate everything in his mind. I think a lot of you are still doing that. It's, it's hard, right? Um, we have Esther saying hello from Barcelona. Um, awesome. Thanks, people. And then I just have a lot of thank yous coming in. Esther says, what is the weather like right now in your place? Well, right now, Esther, it is overcast, so it's a little bit cloudy. Um, and it was a little cold. It actually snowed a little bit yesterday. We really want it to be spring here, but it snowed just a little bit. So uh, that's what the weather's like um, in my area. Um, Beryl Wilson says it's a great way to improve our vocabulary. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Um, anyways, I hope 
um, that all of you have a good weekend. Uh, Gosia's uh, hoping that I have a good weekend. That's great. Um, Asa Lin says they're from, oh, Alyssa from Taiwan. Thanks for teaching us. You're welcome. Bright sides of thing. Hey, guys, thanks for coming for another live stream. Uh, don't forget, uh, watch it again tomorrow if you have some time. Um, last week, I did a little live stream on Saturday night. Uh, I might do that again. I'm not sure. No promises. When you say in English, no promises, it means something might happen or it might not. But uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Um, tons of you came out. I'm going to end the live stream now. And uh, I hope all of you have a great weekend. And I hope that